Along with the New York Rangers and the Detroit Cougars, later to be renamed to the Red Wings, the Chicago Blackhawks joined the National Hockey League as an expansion franchise in 1926. The team's owner, Frederick McLaughlin, was a commander with a machine gun battalion of the 86th Infantry Division in the First World War. That division was known as the Black Hawk Division and was itself named after Chief Black Hawk, who was a prominent Native American figure in the history of the state of Illinois. Black Hawk had fought on the side of the British during the War of 1812 and later fought to regain territory for the Sauk tribe in Illinois. He died in 1838, but his name and likeness has been an important part of Illinois history ever since. The Chicago Blackhawks built their team initially by purchasing the rights to the players of the Portland Rosebuds of the Western Hockey League. At first, the Blackhawks had competition in Chicago because Eddie Livingstone, the same Toronto-based owner who had caused the demise of the National Hockey Association, started a new league called the American Hockey Association to compete with the new NHL. The Blackhawks and the Chicago Cardinals of the AHA both played in the Chicago Coliseum that first year. The Cardinals played only one year and folded, while the Blackhawks have gone on to become an NHL powerhouse, especially in the modern era. The Blackhawks won their first ever game against the Toronto St. Pats in November 1926. They finished in third place that first season and played the Boston Bruins in the first round of the playoffs. The Bruins won that series. In the following two years, the Blackhawks finished last in the standings and missed the playoffs. In 1929, the Blackhawks moved to their new arena, the Chicago Stadium, where they would play for the next 65 years. That first season in the new arena inspired the Blackhawks to a second-place finish, but the team lost in the playoffs against the Detroit Red Wings in double overtime. The following season, the Blackhawks made it all the way to the Stanley Cup Finals and had the Montreal Canadiens on the ropes with a 2-1 lead in the series, but Montreal closed out the series with two straight wins. After two more sub-par seasons, the Blackhawks would finally win the Stanley Cup in 1934. They finished in second place that year and knocked off both the Montreal Canadiens and Montreal Maroons in the early rounds of the playoffs before beating the Detroit Red Wings to claim their first championship. The victory was marred by the terrible news only two months later that goalie Chuck Gardner, who led the team to the cup, had died of a brain tumor. After some respectable seasons in the mid-1930s, the Blackhawks would claim their second Stanley Cup in 1938. In the previous year, owner Frederick McLaughlin engineered the team so that only American-born players would be on the roster. Eight of those American-born players were still on the team for that second cup win over the Toronto Maple Leafs in the finals, including goaltender Mike Caracas. In December 1944, owner Frederick McLaughlin died, and the team was bought by Bill Tobin, who was a frontman for Detroit Red Wings owner James E. Norris. Norris preferred his Red Wings, and for many years the Blackhawks were virtually ignored by ownership, sneaking into the playoffs only twice between 1945 and 1958. When James E. Norris died in 1952, his son James D. Norris took over the team and worked to turn things around. After some years of rebuilding, the Blackhawks won their third Stanley Cup in 1961, surprising the Canadians in the semifinals and beating the Red Wings in the finals. The team was backstopped by Glenn Hall and led by Bobby Hull, Ab McDonald, Pierre Pilat, Chico Mackey, and Stan Mikita. The core of the team stayed together through most of the 1960s, although Glenn Hall was left unprotected in the 1967 expansion draft and was claimed by the St. Louis Blues. In search of a replacement starter in Nets, the Blackhawks claimed Tony Esposito off waivers from Montreal, and he went on to become the franchise goalie for many years. In his first year, he recorded an NHL record 15 shutouts in a single season. He also was a member of Team Canada in the 1972 Canada-USSR series and was the first goalie to beat the Soviets. Esposito became an American citizen in 1981 and retired after 15 years as a player with three Vezina trophies, 
the Calder Trophy for Rookie of the Year in 1970, and multiple All-Star appearances. He was elected to the Hockey Hall of Fame in 1988. For the 1970-71 season, the Blackhawks were moved to the Western Division, where they finished in first place comfortably and were the favorites to win the Stanley Cup, but lost in Game 7 of the Finals at home to Montreal 3-2. The remainder of the 1970s saw the Blackhawks as a strong team with the likes of Keith Magnuson, Stan Mikita, Dennis Hull, Pitt Martin, and Darcy Rhoda. The Hawks even iced Bobby Orr after signing him as a free agent for the 1976-77 season for 20 games and briefly for six more games two years later before the superstar defenseman retired because of his failing left knee, which took the brunt of the punishment over years of rushing up the boards on the right side. Through the 1980s, the Blackhawks maintained a consecutive playoff appearance streak that had started in the late 1960s. In the 1985-86 season, the team officially changed its name from the two-word Black Hawks to one-word Blackhawks after noting that the documents drafted for the original entry into the league used the one-word version. In the 1990-91 season, the Blackhawks brought rookie goalie Eddie Belfour in and he won both the Vezina and Calder trophies that season. The Hawks continued to make the playoffs and keep their streak alive. The 1993-94 season was the team's last in Chicago Stadium, and the following year they moved into the United Center. In 1997-98, the Hawks' playoff streak ended after 28 years. The next three years were the darkest for the team in recent memory with consecutive playoff misses. Finally, in 2001, the Hawks' acquisition of Eric Daze started to turn things around, but then the team lost captain Tony Amante to free agency. The worst season in franchise history came in 2003-2004 with only 20 regulation wins. With the 2004-05 season cancelled due to a labor dispute, the Blackhawks took time to reset and hired Dale Talon as the new general manager. Some player and coaching moves followed, but the team still found itself stuck near the bottom of the standings. The one bright light about finishing low in the standings was the fact the Hawks would pick high in the 2006 and 2007 entry drafts, selecting Jonathan Taves third overall in 2006 and Patrick Kane first overall a year later. In 2007, team president Bill Wirtz died. Wirtz was much unliked among the fans and former players. He refused to let Blackhawks games air on local television, and veteran players such as Bobby Hull and Stan Mikita would have nothing to do with the team as long as he was alive. When successor Rocky Wirtz, Bill's son, assumed the presidency of the franchise, Hull, Mikita, and Tony Esposito came back and agreed to serve as team ambassadors. Late in the 2007-08 season, with Taves and Kane doing well, but Taves out with a knee injury, the Blackhawks continued their rebuild with trade deadline moves that brought more future draft picks to the team, as well as Andrew Ladd. The 2008-09 season saw the return of the Blackhawks to the playoffs, and the team went deep before falling in five games to the Detroit Red Wings in the Western Conference Finals. In the 09-10 season, the Blackhawks continued their rebuild, but got into salary cap trouble and could not hang on to all of their talent. Stan Bowman was hired to stabilize the team, and by the time it reached the playoffs, it had a solid core of Kane, Taves, Duncan Keith, Patrick Sharp, Marion Hossa, Chris Versteeg, and a duo of good goaltenders in Antti Niemi and Cristobal Huey. The Blackhawks struggled in the first round of the playoffs, falling behind in Nashville before coming back and winning the series in six games. After that, they beat Vancouver in six games and then swept San Jose to win the Western Conference and advance to the Stanley Cup Finals against the Philadelphia Flyers. It took six games, but the Blackhawks won their first Stanley Cup in 49 years, with Jonathan Taves winning the Conn Smythe Trophy as playoff MVP with 22 assists. The following season, with a depleted roster due to more salary cap adjustments, the Blackhawks made the playoffs again, but the Canucks got their revenge by taking them out in seven games. In 2012, the Hawks got knocked out in the first round by the Phoenix Coyotes in six games. In 2012-13, after a late start and only a 48-game regular season because of a lockout, 
the Blackhawks won the President's Trophy with a record of 36-7-5. They steamed through the playoffs to face the Boston Bruins in the Stanley Cup Finals, beating the Bruins in Boston in Game 6 to win their second Stanley Cup in four years. The Blackhawks now had five Stanley Cups in their history, all five being won on the road. In 2013-14, with the new playoff alignment format, the Blackhawks faced St. Louis in the first round, having to come from behind to knock off the Blues in six games and then take out the upstart Minnesota Wild in six games to reach the conference finals. The Los Angeles Kings ended the Blackhawks' chance at a repeat Stanley Cup win when Marion Gaborik scored for the Kings in overtime in Game 7 to advance to the Stanley Cup Finals, where the Kings would win their second cup in three years. The following season, the Blackhawks got great goaltending from Corey Crawford and Scott Darling in the regular season and then into the playoffs. Chicago beat Nashville in six games in the first round, swept Minnesota in the second round, and faced Anaheim in the conference finals. The series went to Game 7, and the Blackhawks built a 4-0 lead and hung on to win the game 5-3 and advanced to the Stanley Cup Finals once again, this time against Tampa Bay. Without home ice advantage, the Blackhawks went into Game 6 at the United Center, up three games to two. Corey Crawford earned a shutout, and Duncan Keith and Patrick Kane scored to give the Blackhawks their third cup in six years, their sixth overall, and their first Stanley Cup win on home ice in team history. The 2015-16 season saw the Hawks lose several key players in order to shed salary and remain under the cap. Brandon Saad, Patrick Sharp, Christopher Stieg, Antoine Vermette, and Johnny Oduya all left the team. The addition of rookie Artemi Panarin, who won Rookie of the Year, helped the Blackhawks return to the playoffs where they fell to the St. Louis Blues in seven games. This past season, the Blackhawks finished first in the Western Conference with 109 points and faced the eighth-seeded Nashville Predators in the first round. The Predators stunned the Blackhawks in four games and went on to make their way to the Stanley Cup Finals for the first time in franchise history before falling to the Pittsburgh Penguins. As the 2017-18 season approaches, the Blackhawks have made adjustments to their roster, moving Nicholas Chalmerson and Artemi Panarin while reacquiring Brandon Saad and Patrick Sharp. Chicago has made a name for itself by being a team that has been able to retain its core players for long-term periods while adding shorter-term talent each year to continue to be a Stanley Cup contender. Patrick Kane, Jonathan Taves, Brandon Saad, Artem Anisimov, Brent Seabrook, Duncan Keith, and Corey Crawford now form the core of the team and Chicago fans will be looking for a fourth modern Stanley Cup celebration for one of the few teams that can truly be called a dynasty in the NHL's salary cap era.